All right, what's going on, everybody? Yo, what's up, man? What's up, bro? All right. So if you guys got any kids screaming in the background or anything, uh, it's not too loud on my side, but just uh, if anybody, you know, complains about it, just meet your mic if you don't mind. All right. All right. So I saw Tesla. I saw. Um, I'm going to talk about CVS anyways. Uh, Boeing. Um, Tell me a couple of other ones that you guys want to want to talk about real fast. Intel. Intel. Okay. Um, I've already done my own analysis on AMD and Neo, but you could talk about it too. I want to see your opinion. AMD and Neo. And EA. EA Sports and uh, Activision, ATVI. I'll leave that there. All right, we'll talk about uh, AMD first. So, I'm, are most of you guys from TCX or uh, my group or everybody's group or what? I'm an yeah, TCX. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, Kevin got me back in uh, TCX in 2019, just for a little background, in April 2019. Um, he did teach me the basis of uh, technical analysis, just so you're all aware. Um, but, of course, I evolved on my own into all different forms and I'm one of those people that likes to test every single thing I can to find out how it works, you know, when it works and all those good stuff. So um, my favorite indicator by far is the Bollinger Bands. Uh, unlike everyone else who uses them, um, I have realized that stocks generally move in a range uh, specific to the Bollinger Bands, which is deviations of one, two, and three. Um, the third deviation. So if you see my Bollinger Bands, so right here, uh, let me get my little annotation on. Um, so you see here, so it's got upper, lower, and mid. That is going to be the uh, the ranges that I'm looking for, and a lot of times how I find my price targets, right? So you can draw candle patterns all day long. We, we got a clear range moving right here. Uh, this is going to be your classic double bottom. Chances are this is going to break out. You're probably going to see $100 on AMD by no later than January 20th-ish probably. Um, unless the market, you know, does some crazy stuff like we know it can, um, in my opinion, fortunately, when Trump gets out of office, uh, the market is going to kind of go back to some sort of normal movement, um, like it was prior to his real activity, you know, roughly in the end of 2018. Um, that's when it kind of started up and then through 19 and 20, of course, it just kind of got worse. And of course, Corona came, so that made it even worse. Um, that's my opinion. Anybody else, you know, it's not political, you know, <laughs> opinion or whatever. I didn't vote for either uh, party or any party. So um, I have no bias there. So I just want to put that on the table. Anywho. Um, so based on what you guys see, let me, uh, it's been a minute since I've done a zoom. Give me a second. Let me zoom this out a little bit. Now, some of my charts will have a lot of lines on them, but as you guys see, AMD is very bullish long-term. Um, and TCX, I somehow got removed by accident. So when I got reinstated, all of my history was apparently deleted. So, <laughs> um, I can't go back and find a lot of my stuff because I called uh, AMD at 95, uh, by the end of this year, actually earlier in 2019. So that was, uh, purely based on the Bollinger bands on the monthly chart. So it's, uh, it's a pretty accurate, um, motion. I'm going to pull my fidelity chart up here in a second. And, uh. I'll show you guys kind of what I look at a lot of times. Um, now, as far as y'all's own technical analysis, um, if y'all are new to TCX, you might not have done, um, you know, the evolution course yet or um, or got his book, you know, showing how he does. But if you've been in there for at least a year or probably even six months, you probably know um, about his guides and you probably looked through them. Um, Michael, no, I do not use uh, default settings. So I, 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 I guess I didn't say that. Um, I actually have them set to uh, the third deviation. All right. So if you look at this, this is a custom 
uh, indication setup I set up with uh, the Bollinger Bands and uh, some moving averages. So if you look at all my stuff, you'll end up seeing that I use the Bollinger Bands on the third deviation as my, my trigger pretty much. So anytime, see AMD, SPY, they're pretty solid, um, but a lot of times you'll see, so like right here, let me get my annotation. So this is third deviation up here, this yellow line. This is third deviation, and this is the average between the, the two third deviations. So what's going to happen 90% of the time, which I've seen, uh, now this is mostly on longer time frames, uh, roughly one hour up to um, probably the monthly, uh, any, any higher than the monthly, and you're just wasting your time overall, really, because unless you're buying stocks for the next 30 years, you know, and holding that long on something, you're not going to even care what that looks like. So, um, but every time it tests the third deviation, unless there's a tremendous amount of volume mixed with news, you're not going to break outside into the fourth. So this is the fourth deviation. All right, here's your third. All right, and then you come down into the second, and then your median is going to be right in that center. So this would actually be two, sorry. So this is going to be one, two, three, and then out here and no man's land is four. I know it's really sloppy, sorry about that. But the point is, once it gets to this level, it almost always rejects. See, this is not far enough in history. This is on the monthly chart. Um, here, same situation. This was the uh, financial crisis of 2008 and 2009. Same thing happened. It got down to this immediately terrible area, and then it started swinging up. Um, so in a lot of cases, you're going to have uh, the normal two deviation on the Bollinger Bands. And what that's going to do is actually limit you on what you're actually looking at as far as, um, I guess, signals per se. If you're looking for signals on different charts, you're not going to have a very good idea on using the, the, the regular uh, level two. So let me do this real quick. Uh, this is Fidelity Active Trader Pro. I know a lot of you probably use TOS. Um, hold on, let me change my candles real quick. That'd be fine. All right, we'll just go over here and go with Bollinger Bands. And that is your normal second deviation and 20 day moving average uh, if you're on a daily chart, and that's what we're on right now. Um, so, but you can see that a lot of times that it steps out, you know, it reverses, okay? And it always reverses back to the mean or average true range, whatever you wanna say. Um, but the issue with that is sometimes you'll have it step way out of this range, okay? So in some cases, uh, let's see, this is SPY, so it's going to be very, hmm, let's go with uh, BA since that was another one you guys want to see. Yeah, that's a good example. So a lot, of time, a lot of times people would have seen this right here, and they would have said, you know what, all right, Boeing's going to reverse because it stepped out of the second deviation. Well, after my research, I would see that on the third deviation, this is going to continue to push up, and it's going to ride that third deviation. So out here, it actually stepped out. Um, and same thing over here, it barely tipped out a little bit. Um, a lot of times you can use that though as a reversal pattern and, but you can build triangles or pennants or whatever kind of deal you want to put into this. Um, but the fact of the matter is you need to find where your entry and exit is going to be. Can you use the Bollinger Band specifically for that? Sometimes, um, but more times than not, it's going to continue to go even farther. Uh, so just like with, um, was RSI, you know, a lot of people, you know, when I first started trading, I would see all about RSI all the time. And the issue with that is it's not very accurate. It's both a momentum indicator, but also in street terms, most people say it's uh, overbought or oversold. Um, the only time I got RSI to work for me was, um, I think I am actually recording this Rodrigo. Um, but the only time I actually use RSI and it worked was when I changed the, uh, the parameters to, I think normal is 80 and 20, 70 and 20, and I upped it to 100 and then 10, you know, so that way it actually has, you know, a lot of out motion, you know, going in. And that way I can kind of decipher whether or not it's actually a good play. So this is what I called a couple of weeks back for uh, Boeing. And it was um, when it went from way up to way down. So it's just kind of zoomed <clears throat> in on the monthly. But you're going to have this push, fish hook pattern here, right? So anytime you have a stock that sells off, this is what I used to trade with all the time, by the way. Um, always the fish hook pattern. It was very, very, uh, very prominent when I got into trading at first. 
and I used it very often, especially when I was using Robinhood in, in the beginning. You know, it was like this. That was my trading thing, right? Uh, before I got into Fidelity, and I used TD Ameritrade for a while. I just I don't like them uh, for personal reasons. Um, but TOS is a very excellent uh, charting uh, software. But anyway, so you're going to have a situation to where you have this um, this nice big, you know, fish hook occur, and a lot of times it's a lot longer than you think it will be. Uh, some people think it's just going to do this and come right back up. Those V-type recoveries are very rare. Um, <laughs> if you look at the daily chart on S&P and stuff like that, you'll see that it happened with Corona. Uh, but it was still kind of pedaling out a little longer than it did the last time in the flash crash of 2018-19. Uh, this may be a lot of information for some of you guys. I may be talking really fast. I'm pretty sure I'm recording this. If I'm not, I'm sorry. Uh, but again, I wasn't planning on doing this for a long time on today anyway. Um, but anyway, what you're going to have is you're going to have the situation where it becomes extremely which everybody's going to say oversold, right? For whatever reason, Corona, the news, who knows? But this is what you're going to see happen. And if you go back and pull up what I posted, on, I think it's still in my chat, but I put it on Instagram also. Um, and right here at 230 level was where I mentioned take profit. And that's literally what happened the first time around. It hit like 227, I think it was maybe. And then it just pegged out and then it you know, came back to a, a more median area. Um, if you guys can't see this, this is the 13 and the 50 EMA moving averages. Based on a lot of my research uh, over the last two years, almost three years, it has been the 50, as we know, is, is very you know distinct. But the 13, the 9, and the 21 are all very, very popular with like funds and stuff like that. And believe it or not, a lot of hedge funds do use technical analysis for um, trading decisions. Like they won't, they won't make a full decision without conferring to a chart on most case basis, at least to see what the moving averages look like, where they're at, you know, are people in the technical world going to get scared? Are they going to, you know, panic sell and all that good stuff with the retail traders? Um, but anyway, so the fish hook pattern is a, is a really tremendous pattern that can be used a lot of times. What you're looking for is bad earnings, um, you know, bad news, stuff like that. Um, I can't remember the name of the stock that was the, I think it was like Chinese Starbucks. I can't remember the name, uh, but they sold off hugely on some bad news. You got, you caught a little small fish hook there, but their news was bad. It's like, I think they cooked the books for like 300 million or something like that. And, um, you know, so, but a fish hook was definitely applicable there, but same thing here with Boeing. And this was a perfect opportunity. I posted it right here before this pop. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Um, and that's based on just the chart pattern. So you got to really pay attention to what you're actually trading. So I know a lot of you people all trade really short expirations. And to me, if you're in my group or if I'm teaching you anything, that'll be the first thing that you will learn is to not trade short expirations. And when I say short expirations, I mean, don't trade anything that is three days a week, you know, unless you know for a hundred percent return that you're getting in this trade and getting out ASAP. All right. Um, now real quick, my kids, uh, tugging at my leg over here. Um, if there's any questions based on what I just said, just so I don't lose everybody, uh, go ahead and type it in this little message box right here. And I'll, uh, so if you're typing me personal messages, everybody's going to see it. So, uh, you can DM me on, uh, Inst uh, not Instagram, uh, discord if you want, uh, but give me just a second. I'll be right back.
If you're talking, you're muted. We can't hear you, or at least I can't hear you. All right, everybody, I'm back. Again, I can't, this meeting won't be less than too long. Um, but yeah, Luck and Coffee was this uh, example I was looking at. And as you can see, this is where it was super hyped up back in January. And uh, I can't tell you how many people I saw buying shares, you know, down here. Now, at this first dip, this was perfect time. And I actually did flip it at this point. Um, I bought a couple hundred shares and then sold them at like 220 or something like that. Um, right around this pop-up and I saw it run up to six, but I just let it ride because of all the stuff coming out about fraud and all this. And as you see, it's now on the penny stock list on the OTC market. They got kicked straight off, you know, for all that. So, um, a lot of that is just purely based on speculation. You know, at first they look like a good company, but you know, when you find out you're doing hundreds of million dollars in fraud or however much it was, you know, that's what, uh, pretty much just ruined their chances. Uh, same thing goes for, uh, what is it, Candy, EV, along with uh, Nicola, and a couple of other ones. Um, I like Fidelity just because of all the news, you know, that it has exposed to me, you know, so I can see kind of what's going on. Um, what I think they're going to do with the 3.7 Max is probably end up just rebadging the airplane as something else. Um because a lot of people are going to see if it says 737 MAX or if they ask what kind of airplane it is, regardless of it being recertified. I still think they're going to have tons and tons of people who are scared to fly on those planes if they know what it is. So that's going to be on Boeing to basically rebrand the airplane um, or just call it something else. Um, anywho, uh, let's see. Technical analysis wise, again, that was that was part of pretty much my clean TA as far as um, as far as AMD goes, and it's literally just that we should see a hundred dollars by end of January. Uh, not, nothing in this, you know, Zoom is trading advice or whatever. It's based on strictly technical analysis and et cetera. So um, use your EMAs, you know, use the Bollinger Bands, test them out if you want to. As you can see right here, I have it on the twenty-four moving average. And out for this is 24 months, so you keep that in mind. Um, and then the third deviation is what it says. So, depending on what you're on, uh, standard deviations I have set to three, so we can bring it back to two. And you see how it stepped back inside of all these candles because a lot of times when you see it step out, you're going to look at it and be like, oh, well, that means it's going to immediately reverse. Well, if you would have bought in, you know, puts, you would have got wrecked right here. You know, this is a whole month worth, so don't, no matter what expiration you got, you would have gotten crushed on that unless you bought like three or four months out. Um, well, let's keep that on the third so I don't get confused. You see how it stepped out? But as soon as it pushed against that third band, it was immediately, you know, rejected back sideways. Now, this is still a bullish pattern here. This is continuation happening. Um, you know, so you got your basically your run up to that level, huge bullish engulfing candle. And then now you've got the rectangle forming across, which is more than likely going to break up above um, this level I have here, which I think is right at about 94.50 or 95. And you already see your, your all-time high for this was, what, 96? Yeah, 96.37. Uh, so we trick over back to the daily. Not too much stuff going on here. I am writing my fifth book. I do use Canva. I can't wait for that one to be ready for you guys. Probably be in the next year though before it's ready. All right. Yeah, so we got some clear uh, resistance. And these are pre-drawn lines, you know, back from just another um, candle, you know, which is going to be this one here. But once you get those drawn in, when you start shrinking down your timeline, you know, you're not going to really see much of anything. But you can see that, okay, on this 15-minute chart, we already hit that all-time high, dropped, sold off. And now we're coming down for the day across. Um, this is uh, Weebles online uh, platform between this and Fidelity Active Trader Pro. This is what I uh, this is what I use the most. 
it's just easy to look at. And then, you know, there's something that I see not working out on one side. I can easily switch over to um, fidelity and, and confirm or verify or whichever. Um, on balance volume, this indicator here is probably one of the best indicators that I use secondary. And for the reason is that it, it basically shows you the balance as a whole. And instead of putting this indicator in the chart, it says a secondary indicator. And of course, slow stochastics, which I have also adjusted to the 50 and the 13 moving averages. Um, you know, and a lot of these are indication, right? So you're looking for momentum shifts, you're looking for bullish indication or bearish indication. And regardless of what some indicators show, if you have too many, you're going to have too many opinions. But if you have too little, you might not have proper confirmation. Um, so I know with what Kevin teaches as far as the uh, evolution goes, you know, using stochastics mixed with moving averages, but more so your volume and candles, right? That price action against your resistances and supports. A lot of those things are very key to trading, um, especially technical analysis. So a lot of times you can't really use efficiently anyway. Now, some people can. Some people just have magic eyes when it comes to looking at charts, whether it's candle patterns or candle sticks, you know, and uh, or just looking at time frames or buy and sell orders. I mean, some people are just, you know, phenomenal with their own, you know, things. But, you know, you got different indicators that people build. You got the bread and butter. You've got the TTM squeeze, you know, and all these different ones. I've actually neither used, uh, haven't used either one of those. Um, again, that's on... I don't want to overcomplicate anything at this point because I've got what works and I'm just perfecting that. So if you have your strong points, it's a lot of people say, you know, whatever you're weak on, improve those things. Um, but in some cases, it's best to just strengthen further what you actually have already going for you. Um, this is on the 15 minute chart. So as a daily, you know, you can look at this. You can use your EMAs as reference. So I got the uh, nine crossing over the mid Bollinger band here. And again, this is third deviation. Um, and that's telling me that we may get a nice bullish run at this point. Um, but real quick, so AMD, again, price action was, I'm looking for, uh, we saw this breakout. This was the other day. Um, let me put this right there. Let me turn this off. I'm drawing lines all over the place. Anyway, but once it broke down here, and I mean, it's just a clear downturn at that point, and then now it's coming across. So once you start getting your solid, you know, see right there before the breakout. Matter of fact, I got a book that's uh, specifically about chart patterns, and I think I was just reading about this uh, a little bit earlier. So it's on a huge breakout or uh, cap up, you know, depending on what time frame you're looking at. And what you'll see is huge breakout with volume. And as the volume fades, obviously your price action will probably do the same thing. And but once it gets down to lower lows and lower highs, you're eventually going to get to this breakout point. Um, no, this is not a fish hook, obviously, because it's way out here. Um, even on the daily chart, it's it's almost non-existent to anything. This is still a continuation pattern. Um, but again, price target for AMD, hundred dollars by the end of January. Um, now, obviously, that seems close. You know, some of you, oh well, it's only seven dollars and some change, so it's just a good guess. Yeah, maybe, but a lot of times you can guess at the top of a pattern and it completely reverse and you're completely wrong. Uh, so a lot of people will see that, okay, here, you know, you already hit that level at 94, now you hit 96, and then it's automatically going to reverse because it already did one time before. And that's not always true. Um, so let's see. CBS. Oh, look at this. Look at this jumbled mess. You all love that, don't you? Um so anyway, so I've been following CVS for a hot minute. I was uh, only 30 contracts in to my now 132 contracts, 122 contracts, I'm sorry. No, 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 132. I have uh, 10 separate for January. But I was right here, and I was this was uh, right before Monday open. I was up 700 profit on that trade, and then all of a sudden Amazon came out with their news about their pharmacy, and boom, we dropped way down here, destroyed my position. However, I waited to find out what the low was before making any decisions. And once I saw it established across the 63 line, I knew that, okay, you know, with 63, 64, that's a pretty strong support. It didn't fill back down and we just kept going. So the funny thing is it looks really complicated looking here, 
but when I shrink the time frames, still a lot clearer picture. All right, further you go down, same thing occurs. But this is my bread and butter here myself, excuse the pun. Um, getting here with my Bollinger Bands, EMAs and all this, and I can clearly have a defined picture of where my support and resistances are based on larger time frames. Because you don't want to make any decisions on three minute or five minute charts unless you're um, intraday trading and scalping very quickly. Now, one minute charts, I I think this is silly to look at for the most part because you're not getting a solid picture and you can easily be um, misguided on your on your entry or exit. So like even from here, this is the high was 72.35 on this candle on the bottom here is 72. So it's a 30 cent move for an in the money contract. That's fine. But for an out of the money or at the money contract, this is this is worthless. Um, and you would just move sideways this whole time. You step up to the five. Eventually, so to the five, it gets a little better. You kind of see what's going on, but at the same time, it's the same boat. Uh, in my opinion, don't try to make cup and handles or you know any kind of crazy candle patterns. If you're swinging the trade, if you're swinging a trade, you at least need to be looking at the thirty minute because that way you can actually see what's actually happening. Because a lot of times you can see this, and this is all day here. All right, so it's, it's still bullish, right? It looks good, but it's a lot of sideways happening. If you go over here and you come in on that, you see a very nice, clean pattern happening. And it's, it's very consistent. It's still above the 90 MA. Um, and there's just, there's no reason to even worry about this trade. So you're going to find, you know, resistance here, right where I put it at 72.60. Uh, I always round up numbers. So if, say, the last high was, you know, Okay, we'll, see. we'll use this for example. So the last high was 72.44, right? So that's our last high. Instead of saying we need to break 72.44, I'm going to say we need to break 73, right? Because I know once we break 73, it's actually above, and likely going to close above 72.44. Um, if it's sitting sideways next to it, maybe it does close at 72.60 on the candle, you know, right above that level. But chances are they can quickly, quickly reverse. So with this red zone we got here, 72.64. We're going to go ahead and want to be a little higher than that, roughly 73, 73 and some change. Just to clarify, our entry is actually good because, again, if you drop that on a lower time frame, it's going to be a little harder to, to verify, again, unless you're scalping. Um, anytime you're day trading, you know, three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes could be nice. Uh, let me peep these comments real quick. Yeah, I've been, uh, good job, Alec. I've been at CVS for a hot minute. <laughs> I've been trading them since they were back in the 60s. Um, one thing I do teach in the uh, the one-on-one -on -one mentorship I do, I'm not going to charge for these Zooms when I do this at random uh, just because it'll be at random, and um, it's only going to be when I have like 20 or 30 minutes of time. Um, but the one-on-ones, I go completely in-depth on spreads, um, credit spreads, debit spreads, strangle straddles, uh, calendar spreads, hold on yards. Um, I bring in iHallet sometimes to uh, – you know, talk about, you know, different Greek levels and implied and historical volatility, you know, blend it into those categories. Um, so just as a whole, you know, that's what you can uh, expect if you decide to do that with me. Uh, feel free to DM on that. Um, so CVS price target, um, you look at a longer term, you know, resistances and all that. 80 is a very, very significant resistance after it broke out of this $100 range. And it's been testing it all along. But it's still downtrending. So what we have to do here, we have good news. We have vaccine news, all these different things. So we at least can expect to get back to 75 to 79 before we have to worry about any kind of reversal. Now, again, with the Bollinger Bands, uh, let me open this up a little bit. So it's hard to see on that frame. Let's see if I can get a better picture for clarification. All right, just real quick. Um, you see how these Bollinger Bands, so the yellow band and this white band up here, or gray, uh, are moving together. Uh, we call that bottlenecking, which is basically what happened here in this level. So bottlenecking here, and then you got the Coke forming, and now you're bottlenecking back again. Uh, no, it's not a diamond pattern or anything. Uh, it's literally Coke bottling. So once it starts to narrow, that means the volume is decreasing, and you're getting ready to actually have a breakout, whether it be up or down, 
that's up to the price action and news and all that other good stuff. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, when you're trading with the Bollinger Bands, I would recommend testing it out, you know, before you uh, go in depth, trying to use it as like a signal um, or whatever. But Vortex indicator, we won't talk about that. Uh, I'll do that one on one. It's a complicated indicator to try to understand. Um, but anyway, back to let's go on to the next ticker. So CVS, we get Boeing. Uh, what was the other one? Let me go back over here. All right, let's see. EA, Intel, Activision. Yeah, Tesla, we'll hit Tesla real quick. Looking beautiful. So this is getting into the uh, crazy range at this point. Uh, just because with S&P 500 news, um, complete induction is on December 14th. That is uh, when more than likely why the price got rode down like it did. Uh, we can clearly see it broke out of my uh, my triangle I've got flying on here. And then sure enough, it immediately could get back up right off the nine and push right back under it. So I'm going to find out if we get any rejection here. Now, if I see confirmation at this level, um, we're going to put this here. So if you see confirmation back on top of the 607 level, I'm going to continue to be bullish. I already sold my three shares that I bought just from this, uh, $505 level right here. But um, I was watching it. Once it dropped down to 580 came back up to 590 dropped down to 560 came back to 580 I sold it just because I got tired of it watching up and down, up and down. Made 250 bucks on just three shares. Um, so that's pretty good return overall. I think it was 16% roughly. Um, but anyway, you're going to look for confirmation. So where can Tesla go? That is a great question. Because um, the issue is it's been out for a while. Um, a lot of times this candle you see here is called a dragonfly doji. Uh, and this is going to generally signal a bullish move. Um, so as you can see, this um, the triangle is still effective here, even on the monthly. And drop down, you get a little better picture. This needs to be a little tighter on the upside, so it needs to get back to probably 599 to 5, I'm sorry, 605. And if we move on to the week after at that same level, this candle will fully be a, a dragonfly. And as long <laughs> as uh, volume kicks in, you got it. Uh, on balance volume, so volume is, is clearly continuing up. Same thing with stochastic slow is still up rising, and this is based on the 50 and 13 moving averages. Um, so keep those things in mind when you're when you're making big calls. Again, you trade with me. I mean, I tell everybody this and TCX and, and any of the other groups is if you buy short expirations, you're going to lose a whole lot more money than what you would have made. Now, like the cat in there that made twenty something thousand dollars today, Rico, I believe it is. He um, he bought this Friday's expiration, which is tomorrow. So he likely saw a really good entry, took upon himself to get a massive position, and it turned out really well. But had Boeing rejected immediately, so when he went into there, you know, from whatever his entry, you know, uh, was. Now, he could have been holding these contracts for a week or so. I'm not sure. Uh, chances are he bought them sometime in the last week. Um, I'm not in TCX that much to, to be able to recall that off the top of my head. If anybody knows, feel free to clarify. Um, but chances are, he sold that for profit already. He wanted thirty grand. He may have got it. I'm not sure. Um, but there was also a story about a guy who had um, almost a million dollars worth of Bitcoin and was going to hold it when it hit a million. He had nine hundred eighty thousand Bitcoin dropped from twenty thousand back to twelve, and he now owes four hundred thousand dollars in taxes to the federal government. So don't always expect something to keep running. Can you use technical analysis to try to monitor that? Absolutely. Can you guarantee your technical analysis is going to be better than the news? Absolutely not. Uh, so always just think about those things. I do feel that Tesla is going to hit $800 again by the end of 2021, um, even though it is after split. So again, Tesla is at mega all-time highs now. Uh, 538, I believe, was equivalent to, or no, let's see, five. I think 520, something like that, was the equivalent to what it was at 2300. Um, but we're clearly over that at this point. So with this, what you see here on this on the single candle for this week is that you had a lot of sell pressure at first, but buyers bought it right back up. So you see the low on this candle was 541. 
and now it, it you know it topped out at 607 before it dropped but now it's all the way back to um you know 593 so what you can look at is chances are you're going to continue bullish here um if it rejects really hard off the 607 level again it might move sideways but at worst case this is still more of a continuation but if you buy next friday's expiration for a 650 call right and you're putting all that money in that contract and it just stays sideways you're going to get ripped you're just going to get ripped apart by theta um so keep that in mind again the longer the expiration the better i know tesla is expensive amazon's expensive google's expensive you know naked contracts are very expensive to most everybody's account um even people with 50 grand a four thousand dollar contract is still a moderate amount of the money um when it comes to risk reward ratios so yes if tesla runs 50 or 100 dollars, you can make a serious killing on that three or four thousand dollar contract but if your account is five grand you buy a three thousand dollar contract yeah, it's probably not going to turn out so well for you unless you get lucky on one of those runs. Uh, and I'd like to clarify that because I see a lot of people make a lot of money on these these big moves. But then instead of stepping back, learning how to trade, they just keep doing the same thing over again. Maybe it works out. Most of the time it doesn't. Um, but anyway, Tesla price target 800 by the end of 2021. Uh, so take that how you will. <laughs> that's, that's my price target. Um, Oh, sorry, wrong one. Where to go? Intel. So it's been a real slow mover since it had that uh, that drop back here. I haven't seen any any huge motion, but again, uh, if you can see it based on what I said earlier, you already fish hooking a little bit. Granted, it rejected off this level, so you would have sold from 43 up to this level at probably 45, 46 range, what it looks like, and probably taking profit. However, if you bought say a $50 call for February, you know, with that range, because this was back in November, you know, you're only holding about a two month, three month expiration and Intel is very cheap. So you could have easily gotten a tremendous return so far. Now, yes, it would have moved sideways here, but once it started breaking up above that level, um, pushed against that third band, and this is what I was trying to clarify with some of you guys, uh, if you didn't hear me earlier, uh, one hour chart is really good to watch uh, when it comes to this along with the daily. So when you see the daily and I see it pushing up against these candles like this, you see how it's not stepping out completely and rejecting. It's just pushing on it and pushing on it and pushing on it and pushing on it. Chances are it's going to push harder, right? It's going to get a breakout. You see all this cross up motion right here. So you got the super trend. You've got the EMA nine over the uh, mid band crossed up and here. Okay. Here's a perfect example of what I was going to say earlier. This is very important for the Bollinger Bands, no matter what deviation you're on. You see how these are separating? They're going opposite directions. When that happens, generally, the direction that the candles are facing, it's going to break out in that range. Most of the time from what I've seen, again, nothing compares to news and blah, blah, blah. But technical analysis wise, you can easily see one, two, three, four times. And whatever this fifth candle is going to be for the next day or two, you know, tomorrow's Friday, so a lot of times you get sell-offs. But Intel, I think, is a strong company still overall, uh, regardless of what happened, you know, with the earnings or whatever. But with this, this is a clear define that volume is slowly stabilizing. They paid a dividend here. So the fact that they're still paying dividends still means they're a strong company to me. Um, you got a little kick in volume, faded. You get another kick in volume, you'll probably see this back up to the 53 range probably going on Intel. But again, my expiration would be somewhere, somewhere over here. And, and this is just, it's not about buying time. It's not about leaps, not about any of that crap. It's about putting time on your side, right? Buying time in its sense is helping you save your money. So everybody talks about risk management. I know Kevin preaches it all the time. Most people don't listen, but not only taking smart trades or hedging your positions, which spreads can do for you anyway by themselves. However, you also need to prepare that, okay, so if I buy this position and I just so happen to get at the top of this move because because uh, fish hook trader over here was like, yeah, it's going to break out at this third band. So you go ahead and you buy based on that, right? Now say it drops here. So let's say it swoops back down. So now, you know, you're back to 48, 49. You lost a little bit of theta on there. A little bit of IV went against you. No big deal. But you still have out here. And if you're still in February, you're not really going to care what happens here. Now, if you set a stop loss for like 45, you know, and it starts tricking down to that area. Yeah, you could probably go ahead and just cut <clears> losses. <throat> At that point, you're probably going to be down 
15, 20%. A lot of times that's a lot for some people. And for some people, they let positions go till they're negative 90%, you know, and then they close it or they just let it expire at zero. Um, other major thing I preach is don't let option contracts expire. I don't care what kind of spread you have or guaranteed passive income or whatever other crap somebody's fed you. Um, if you let contracts expire, even after hours, your contract can be exercised against you. And if you're not paying attention and your expiration was on Friday and you got to, and you got to sign or I'm sorry, exercise after hours. So say up to, I think five o'clock is most, um, most, uh, end dates for option clearing houses. If you get it exercised and you're not paying attention and the broker does not automatically assign your contract, you are still 100% responsible to cover that side of the contract. So your contract expires Friday and you got exercised after hours on Friday, you must handle that. If you don't, and the broker does not do it for you, you're fully exposed to pay for that position, whatever it may be. Credit spreads are not all rainbows and butterflies, I promise you. Um, I will choose a debit spread or a calendar spread over a uh, credit spread any day of the week. And with that, for that reason, not, not because I made bad trades with credit spreads or anything like that, I did get eaten alive by Tesla on one position, which was seemingly guaranteed to happen, but it didn't. And it took $7,000 from me in two hours. It happens, right? Um, but at the same time, Boeing, I made $1,500 in a matter of four days. So on the, on a credit spread. So it's, it's all about opinion, but it's also don't trade things that don't make sense. Um, so anyway, so again, you almost have a double bottom here. Uh, it is kind of rising on uh, volume along with EMAs. So you got to kind of watch that. Just make sure it continues. It looks like it's going to break out again. Um, again, I pro probably project 54 to 55 range, probably by February, easy. Um, it is holiday time. So if you're looking at retail side, you know, if they start selling a lot of products or making any deals, um, a lot of times you can go ahead and get a little extra boost on that. Same with AMD. Same with NVIDIA, same with uh, Amazon and Google. Um, but Google services alone, you know, offer a lot. So um, run out of time on my side. Let's see what was, uh, what's another one of the stocks you guys want to talk about real quick? Just ATV, which one, ATVI or EA? Which one's more important? Um, either one. I'm, I'm in a, I'm in both. Um... Okay. I'll, I'll peep that, uh. Oh, this is not my personal watch list, huh? Yeah, very nice. Yeah, I remember looking at these 80s. I remember I had a price target for uh, for 95 on ATVI, and that quickly quickly turned around with this. Yeah, pretty close though. So let's see, this was. Corona. Yeah, so right in this range, I was looking for it. Yeah, I was not expecting anything to happen like this with uh, ATVI. Not not going to that level. Is this what you're talking about? Is this what you're seeing? Or something yeah. similar to that? Let me a second. Let me look. So uh, it appears to, to definitely be a cup and handle for me. Um, you always want to have more volume here, which it does sort of have the volume going on. You got a big buy-in right there. Um, I got the slow build. You do have the handle. Uh, so what you can do, are you already in the position? What's your expiration? No, I haven't gotten, I haven't jumped in that yet. I'm looking at jumping in. I'm holding EA already, but I'm looking at jumping in on this, um, okay. probably January, February expiration. Okay. Yeah. So with that being said, let's see on weekly. The good news is you got a nice solid volume here. And this is all, this is steadily increasing. If you can see that, um, the stochastics, again, I have it set for 50 and 13. So when I see these EMAs cross and the upper motion, chances are you get a nice push move coming. Um, and it does appear like it's going to attempt to cross within the next probably week. Uh, this is the weekly chart. So you just got to keep that in mind. Um, looks like you got a small bull flag potentially happening here. Uh, a lot of times that's what you see. You'll see the cup on handle form. And what people don't realize is it's actually a bull flag that occurs along with continuation. 
So it'll probably boost up here, probably go sideways a little, where it'll again come up again. So yeah, February is probably a pretty safe expiration. Um, I know this is retrospect because you're looking at these massive time jumps, <laughs> but my candle is, yeah. is, I'm just drawing that based on that. Um, with uh, one detail that I did not know that I researched uh, recently that found, because even though you don't really see it here, you want to see a cup and handle form on a longer, you know, if it's a daily chart, you want to see several weeks worth of this forming. Um, you got a little bit going on here, but I mean, you can make charts look like anything you want to if you try hard enough. Um, yeah. Even though it does appear to be on somewhat of a sideways downtrend, what you can get always is that breakout. So come from here. And as soon as you get above this level and confirm, if it pushes against this Bollinger Band right here, all you got to do is break out. So right now you're on the 50. Everything I've seen stop on the 50 EMA so far in the last two months uh, since everything has been a little more calm with the election. I've always seen a breakout. Tesla did the best example. Boeing did it again like twice. Um, and right now you're sitting right on that. So you've already broken up. You're, you're maintaining the nine. Not only are you maintaining the nine, but you're also sitting on the 50, right? And you're at this trend line coming across. So once it breaks up, yes, you do need to see a little move here. Uh, this is the daily at this point. So we're looking for the super trend is telling us that, um, let's see, 82, a one. So probably, I would probably settle with 83 before I went really bullish on it. But again, that's already a $5 move or $4 move roughly. So if you do that, you're going to miss out on that little move ahead. So it's at this point, at this EMA, you can either make the conscious decision to enter the trade at the 50, knowing that it's a really strong support, along with some volume. Because right now you see the volume is deferred, right? So it's really faded. So all you got to do is get volume here too. Um, if you get a breakout on volume here, you can do the same situation. And you can break out again and come back vertical this way, where 80 would easily be taken. Um, now, I know in the money and at the money contracts for ATV are pretty good. Uh, but if you go too far, 5 or $6, $7 out of the money, it's not going to be as great as return, even with a smaller move. You'd have to have a big 5 or $10 move to actually make sense of it. Um, so keep that in mind. Based on my experience with ATV, I haven't traded a lot. But for the probably 15 times I did trade it, I was always noticing that in the money or at the money was the best. And the contracts aren't really expensive, so um, not not compared to others anyway. Does that cover ATVI for you? I'll hit you real quick. Yeah. Or was there any questions yet? Um. So would this be something that you would play? Like you wouldn't play this like you played CVS with um a far oh, yeah, out absolutely. the money, far out of the money, twenty contracts instead of one at the money. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you something real quick. This is my Robinhood account, which is my play account, sandbox, whatever you wanna call it. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks amazing right here. It's actually way higher than this. Um, but one thing you need to understand with some of the posts I post, see this is more accurate. Uh, so you see this position is up really nice right now. Mm -hmm. Robinhood. I don't know why Robinhood does this. Anytime I'm on Zoom, Robinhood does not participate. Come on. There we go. So average cost, I averaged down, I bought 30 contracts. Um, I think it was right before the news hit. And I'd already done this to 70, right? When it was at 61, $62, I did this the first time to test it out on CVS because it moved slow. The deltas were really good. Now with this, you do want to make sure that your deltas are going to be worth it, right? So even if CVS is over $80, and I'll explain this more in a second, over $80 by next Friday, and I had to assign my contracts against the against the ones I sold, which I'll show in a second. I'm still going to make money on this trade because I had a longer expiration. Therefore, my value is higher, right? Not only is it covering the sold position, but it's also giving me a profit on top of that. That is, these are AKA known as poor man's uh, cover calls. So you, you did spreads uh, here, right? You can either, and if I show it all together, it looks bad. That's why I showed you this part first. Um, so it's showing that, oh, okay, never mind. It's showing total return 600 now. Um, but these sold positions here, so you see that I've got 122 for December 18. I got 10 separate for January 15. And these were at 40 before uh, the Amazon news with the pharmacy. So yeah. I'm absolutely, I mean, this will be $4,000 by probably Friday. Uh, not tomorrow, but next Friday. As long as these expire worthless, this position is 100% well, I'm sorry. 
30% cost at that point because I've done this three times now. I've done it on November expirations and I moved out to December and got these. So I got, this is $248 worth of That's credit. That's a calendar spread. Exactly. Um, AKA poor man's cover call, depending on how you want to yeah. say it. Uh, Cause it's the same principle being accomplished. So it's showing that I'm down $1,100. So basically you could just add that back to what it showed a minute ago is 1600. So it's not actually correct, right? Because my yeah. credits are so small, anytime the credit is higher, which is showing what 11 now, when the credit is higher than what you receive, it shows it as a loss. That's just how it is. And it's funny because I've actually tried to get a higher credit and it wouldn't let me, it wouldn't, it wouldn't accept it. So this is mostly somebody with really, really, really large positions they're selling, you know, hundreds of contracts or, you know, probably market makers trying to steal money from somebody because if they can get you to panic, then you'll end up paying $1,400 for this, you know? Yeah. And why, why would I do that? Right. Because I watched um, CBS on the 70 ones I had went from 64 all the way to 67, 90. And I was like, Ooh, it's getting close. And as soon as it retracted those, these dropped to a dollar and I bought them all back for a dollar right then and got out of position. But you know, even then 250 bucks versus the what 3000 it's up right now total is yeah. you know if you're excluding you know the $1,600 miss here or i'm sorry $1,100 miss then it's going to be hugely in my favor to let this ride um and again i've got the one still january so if it gets even higher than that i'm not going to sell any more contracts because as soon as i get rid of these on monday the 14th i'm immediately selling these no matter what the profit yeah. is i'm not going to risk it going down and me losing any money because this one, as you can see, is already worth, I think it's like a hundred something percent return already. And um, come on, man. It's the easiest yeah. platform to teach spreads, by the way, because TD is very confusing to try to teach people spreads. Um, my first student, he's he's doing hella good with spreads and uh, he uses TD. So he, once, I, once we got him figuring out how to work them on there, he was, I think he made like 14 grand in the first week. It was tremendous. Doing, doing this That's similar setup, so. That's what I, I my my scare my what I'm concerned is getting something like uh, getting that and then going in the money and getting early because the early expiration date should expire out of the money you collect that premium and then your contracts that are further out are still in the money and you're profitable exactly on those so what scares you um the losses if because they lose so much more as as if the if it goes in the money prior but at, then again at the same time if if one goes in the money they're both going in the money and the later dated one should have more value because right. of theta exactly yeah and you see you can see that these just keep flopping around um how in the world is this up 392 dollars so this is, this is a hedge position against everything <laughs> In case the market decides to crash, this one position is worth three hundred. I'm sorry, thirty nine thousand dollars. If you know spy crashed, um, which I doubt it will, but um, total I mean, this is what seven hundred bucks total, seven forty six. So I'm perfectly okay with losing that to hedge everything else that I do, because ninety percent of the other positions are all bullish. So uh, there's a couple that I did puts on, but other than that, that's all this is. If you saw this and were wondering what it was. Um, but yeah, with, with the debit spreads, counter spreads, we can get together on one on one if you want to, um, you know, depending on what your level is, you know, and, and how long you need, you know, we can work out pricing or whatever, but it's completely up to you. And um, right. I just figured I would drop some knowledge on some of these uh, TCX folks. Are you a mine or are you in TCX or both? I'm in all three yours, TCX and um, Jay's. What, what's your username? Um, TJ. Oh, cool. Okay. Oh, by the way, I got, I'm about to ship out your cut. <laughs> I, got, I finally, I finally printed my labels out. Cool, man. That's what's up. All right. Um, yeah, I was gonna, I was just gonna message you, but now you're already, uh, you're already in my chat. Cool. Um, yeah, real quick. Yeah. So calendar spreads, man. That's that's where the money's at, dude. And as long as you have a long enough expiration, if you buy these in the money or at the money, going long, it's gonna return a dramatically higher return but you're putting more money out there on front because you want these essentially to pay for these, right? Or at least a huge portion of it. So the other trade, I mean, I pulled 900 on that one and it only cost me 150 bucks after all the credits expired, you know, and I got nice. all that money back. It only cost me $150 for that whole CVS trade the first time. 
And this one I've received 100 and no, see, two. This would be 248 and 100 on two separate occasions. So that was roughly half of the value I've paid for this. So I'm only spending 580 roughly on this trade. And it's already at this level just by itself. So it's clearly paid for it um, on the low side for the most part. So right. it just makes it a lot better for your profit. But yeah, you don't want to do this with Tesla or any kind of stuff like that. Even though the premiums yeah, yeah. are higher, you, you're going to get destroyed if you get early assigned. So no, slow movers is from what I've read. Slow movers is what these work best on. Exactly. Uh, and make sure they got good deltas. GE was a really good one as well. Um, let's do a quick look at this daily. Yeah, you got to swing it up. Once it gets up to this level, uh, probably to 145, 147 and ticks down a little bit, you'll have your cup of nine there too. Yeah, I'm in good on EA. I have um, two contracts. Uh, 145 picked up for a dollar. Oh, nice. What's the expression? Um, January 15th. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, so you got some time right around here. Looking for hopefully $10 move between now and then. Oh, goodness. Fill that gap. Yeah, so not only, not only with the gap, but you have this, uh, you're pushing against the third band soon here. You've already broke above the super trend on the top side. And you have the 90 MA crossing the 50, which is huge bullish motion by itself. Um, I didn't have time to go deeper into my fidelity charts um, just because lack of time. <laughs> um, so when I do when I do, do the one on one, just just FYI, I don't know if you read my post or whatever, but it is uh, currently uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And two hours each is preferred, but you know if we branch it out into sixteen days, then it's one hour each night. I feel like the two hour sessions are a little better, just because you get more time. Um, okay. And it's easier to go back and forth with all that. Anybody you know that needs help or anything, just let me know. Um, yeah, this is this is looking pretty good. So this is uh, let me make sure. Test the weekly. Yeah, yeah, and now you're getting the thirteen crossing over the fifty in a minute. So as long as it doesn't reject, which it hasn't, it's already broken over. So as long as you maintain above the 135 level, then, you know, you'll be good on the next move up. Yeah, cool. Real fast here. Yeah, so you got the 9, the 21, all crossing up toward the 50, which is huge bullish motion. You're in the second range. So once it steps into the third range, it'll start catching the volume. It is showing a slight reversal, possibly on slow statistics, but... I doubt it'll hold much. It might drop a little bit like this one, but other than that, it should hold pretty well. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate you, man. And anybody else that was in, we've got six of you guys in here still. I appreciate you all listening and watching. Um, if you have any questions, DM me. And if you heard what I said about the mentorship, just let me know. Um, other than that, next time we do this, it could be a while. So <laughs> one-on-ones I, I try to do you know, pretty often, but as far as the... Uh, the kind of group sessions it gets kind of carried away sometimes because it's talking to so many people but appreciate um, your time man yeah thank you guys all right till we meet again thank you yep